Okay, let's get started. So today I'm going to talk about IPFS, and um, IPFS stands for Interplanetary File System. A uh, high-level overview, so it's a distributed file system um, <coughs> that's trying to give every user and every client uh, the illusion of a single file system where uh, you can get and store things. Um, it's created by Tom Bennett and a incredible team at uh, Protocol Labs. And uh, you'll see some of the slides that are borrowed from him, so I have to thank him in advance. Um, IPFS is currently on GitHub. It's, um, it's an open source library, and it's actually a compilation of uh, a lot of libraries. Um, they've modularized every little bit and uh, imposed dependencies on each other. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, as you can see, it's uh, drawn a lot of attention. So as I said, it's a large open source project. Uh, there's uh, 400 plus contributors and uh, 70 plus uh, contributions every week. So to motivate the idea for IPFS, I thought that we'd start very basic with uh, how the web works today um, when we use a, a browser with HTTP. Um, so when you go to get something, you have to connect to the host and uh, request your data and it comes back to you and uh, you get to use it. But it's not very efficient if uh, we're in, if you're with multiple people in one location requesting the same item, you're all going to the host to get this data. And uh, you know, an example use case would be, let's say YouTube. Uh, if all of us, and let's say there's 30 of us in here, and we're all trying to get one YouTube video that's 200 megabytes and we're eight hops away from YouTube, that's in total 40 gigabytes uh, of traffic that's being uh, transferred uh, across the, the network. And for a video like uh, Gangnam Style, uh, which has over two billion views, um, you know that gets very costly. But this thing, this thing actually comes out to roughly uh, almost 500 petabytes of, of data that's just being transmitted. And just think about it: if we were all in this room and some people had the video already, we technically could just go to them, or our computers could go to them and get this data. And uh, there shouldn't be a reason for us to all query YouTube and get this, this one thing. Right? So that's the inspiration for, for IPFS. Um, you know, everybody is, is a host, and everybody can provide and also store things uh, for each other to use. And the idea is that when you're in, in this network, um, as long as you know, your, your, your certificates are signed, everything checks out, the data itself is just data, and uh, you can transfer it around. Um, and this leads to, to the example of you know, if you're in a classroom and everybody is on Google Docs, um, it doesn't make sense that we all have to go ping Google and come back and just to collaborate with each other in this one room uh, when we're geographically uh, together. If the internet goes down here, we should still be able to collaborate with each other. There should be no reason that we, we have to connect to Google and then come back. So that's, that's kind of like the, the, the inspiration to, towards IPFS. And uh, it's meant to be distributed, it's meant to be permanent, safer, faster, smarter, and it should work uh, offline. So the underlying architecture is um, quite extensive, actually. Um, and they've broken it down into several components, which I'll talk about today. If we look at the individual components, there's several things that, that they're, they're doing, well, much more than several. And um, in this middle layer here, <coughs> there's these formats of encoding and and decoding that are currently being used in, in, in the world. And what they've recently done is implement this little IPLD, which is a, a interplanetary linked data. And it's to standardize the format of transmission uh, through this thin waste uh, design. And it's to make the network side of things easier to communicate with the application side of things. So IPLD is a common hash chain format for distributed data structures. And it uses a Merkle link approach. Um, a Merkle link is a link uh, between two objects, um, which is content address with the cryptographic hash of the target object. And the reason why you want to do this is there, there are two notable properties that we get from this. One is uh, cryptographic identity checking. And so the reason why, why that's nice is that you get uh, this secure, trustless uh, exchange of data. And Additionally, you get immutable data structures, which is excellent if you want to do versioning or say long-term uh, long uh, archiving. And IPNS is the framework for which um, they're, they're currently 
providing a simple naming system where you can have pointers to the exact hash of the content you're, you're considering. And the inspiration for this is actually very straightforward. If you think about how we go to the web right now, when you type in google.com, you don't know the address of the actual host server that you're connecting to. It's 8.8.8.8, but they could easily change it to 4.4.4.4 or any other number that they want to. Um, and for the user, they shouldn't have to memorize or even know about this. The swap should be underneath in a layer where it's abstracted away. And so with the current internet design, you know, when you type in google.com, you go to do a DNS lookup, so you connect to your local ISP's DNS server, and then they go to down the chain of DNS servers until eventually they re reach a host that knows google.com, and it comes all the way back here and says, oh, it's 8.8.8.8, and your browser types that in, and then proceeds to, to go directly uh, through the network uh, and hop to Google. Um, they do a similar protocol here, um, where you have this, this hash, and uh, this hash is the uh, hash of the public key, uh, which is composed from the private key, which is used to sign your IPRS record. And this record is basically attesting to the fact that uh, your pointer is authentic. It's by this person that's, that it claims to be, and it's going to this, this uh, location, which is now uh, the record. And so this gets you from something, let's say, uh, uh, that, that address ending in FOC, and uh, if they wanted to update this, uh, this file or update uh, whoever is hosting this, they can just point a new record and FZ6 will be replaced. Additionally, they also make it human readable. So you know, if you wanted to put in something like example.com or ipfs.io, um, that can be routed uh, uh, through the DNS name uh, convention and get you to a key name, which will then get you to your content addressable. So here, here's like an example um, with ipfs.io. And to make all of this work and to make clients talk to each other, they use this thing called the P2P. Uh, P2P is just peer-to-peer. -peer, and they have implemented just a whole host of different protocols in order to abstract away the idea that there are even different types of machines. Like there's mainframes, there's computers, there's phones. Like they all use different types of protocols for, for different reasons. And uh, if you're on different networks, you may use a different convention. The idea is to just abstract that away so that any two devices can, can talk to each other, or any two clients can talk to each other. And this is kind of like the secret sauce of IPFS. Um, instead of assuming a network stack, we are creating modules of capabilities. And uh, you can just always expose the same primitive. Um, you just dial to other peers by their ID, which is derived by the public key. And uh, you can dial from any of these protocols then. So the interop allows uh, relaying connections and uh, between any two nodes in the network and allows all devices so let's do a demo. Um, this is JavaScript. Um, and there's one typo here that should say a one, but you can just ignore that. Um, so if we require IPLD and we put in some data into object one, say hello, uh, we can get you know, the data, we can get the hash of it. So let's call it object one. Let's also make a second one, object two. And uh, its hash is this guy. So just for recollection, um, the first guys was ending in BG. The second one is ending in HB. And let's make this third guy where we use IPLD's format. And uh, I'll talk about that in a second. So there's two components. There's uh, a data parameter and a files parameter. The files parameter is your links. That's where you store your links. And you can see here there is BG and HB. So that's your two objects. And again, you can create uh, the data and the hash, and um, this one ends in HW. Now, we have a structure like this. And if we go and say require IPFS, we can add the three objects. And let's say we try to resolve BG or HB, which are our object one and object two. And it gives you back parameter data and hello, and data and world. And what's cool is that if you just add in a forward slash data, uh, you get back the, the direct raw, raw items. And so it's very similar to how you would you know, touch JSON or something, but with this different convention of you just directly index uh, by, by this uh, uh, address. And what's awesome is uh, if you put in HW, it gives you back the files, which are those two guys. 
And if you go to, to request them, um, you can just index it like an array, 0 and 1, and it'll give you back the data of those guys. Um, and if you request for the data, you get hello and world again. So this allows us to do something really, really neat um, in just a few lines of code. We can now write a function, say, cat file. Um, and if we want to output this file, uh, we can recursively go through the files and get back our data. So with some very basic examples, um, let's put an object one, we get hello. We put an object two, we get world. Uh, but what's awesome is if you put in object three, it'll recursively go and get you hello world. And so that's just like a very small building block that allows you to, to go into much larger domains. And uh, we're now seeing a lot of applications that are being deployed and used with IPFS. In fact, uh, Proof of Luck, which is uh, a talk that I gave on uh, a few weeks ago, uh, our, our proof of concept uses IPFS to implement it. There are other implementations as well. This is Orbit. Uh, this guy uh, is actually uh, one of the contributors to IPFS as well. And he wrote this peer-to-peer um, -peer chat that interfaces over IPFS. But there are much more applications than just that. You can watch movies on it. You can play games on it. You can read blogs on it. You can do pretty much anything that, that you, you can think about that requires a, a file system in order to make it work. And uh, th that's kind of like the, the beauty of IPFS. And we're seeing a lot of applications today are actually integrating and using IPFS now uh, because of this wonderful abstraction that you get. So that is IPFS. It's a protocol to upgrade the web. And uh, thanks. incentives for people to actually store the data? Yeah, so there really uh, isn't too many incentives. It's, um, it's designed so that when you, when you use it, you can provide information for others, and you can also get information from others. Um, so it's kind of like a mutually trusting system. I think, I think Filecoin is also developed by, by protocol, and uh, they've built an incentive structure around that. But IPFS is really just like, hey, I'm connected to some peers, and uh, I'm looking for this file on the network. And uh, hey, I also have these files that I want to broadcast for the network. And, yeah. I noticed on the protocol, one of them was like BitTorrent. So does it take into account like how much you're how much you're seeding, for example? Yeah. So there are some things with that, and I'm not familiar with it, but I know that they have worked very closely with them on that, and also. With Bitcoin and Ethereum, they have different implementations um, uh, to allow those to, to work uh, interchangeably. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, so, what about um, actually? No, I'm thinking of the other one. Never mind. I was. Okay. There's a similar protocol just for like websites and such, and a big issue is just privacy, because if you access something, everyone can see. I'm not familiar. Oh. But, um, I'm not sure how much you know, but what's like, what are the big like, differentiators between IPFS and Swarm? Like Ethereum, Swarm? Oh, yeah. I, I couldn't speak much to that. Oh. Yeah. Good question, though. <laughs>